In this video, I will be sharing with you some very valuable insights on mindset shifts that you can use to increase the amount of wealth you have numerous times. So stay tuned for that. So this is actually something that I personally think is very, very valuable. And I will be talking a lot about business, but even if you don't have a business, this can be very useful to you. So what is it? Well, there's certain mindset shifts that I think are very important in order to make a lot of wealth. Now, we are gonna focus on one specific mindset shift today. And what that basically is, is to understand that when you're trying to make money or when you're trying to accumulate wealth, one thing that people screw up a lot is that they think that in order to make a lot of money, you have to, on some level, be evil or greedy or do something where you're exploiting others. In reality, that's far from the truth. And, you know, this is something that holds back a lot of people. Because they have disbelief or some other flawed piece of thinking, it's kind of just holding them back. Now, for a lot of people, this may not be a problem. For many people, though, this is a huge problem. And they've got it from somewhere. Maybe it was their culture, their upbringing, their religion. Maybe it was the fact that their parents was always telling them that uh, you know rich people are evil and greedy. And guess what happens? When they grow up, they have all these things that are mentally blocking them subconsciously without them even realizing it from making a lot of money. And this is actually very common. And there's many variations. There are people who say, oh, I can't, I want to be rich, but I can't be rich because that would mean I would be a snobby guy who checks into fancy hotels. And I never liked those snobby people who only went to fancy hotels and restaurants or whatever it is. And it just makes like no sense logically if you really think about it. Do you have to go to a snobby restaurant if you are rich? No, it doesn't make sense. However, a ton of these things hold people back. Another huge one along the same lines is, oh, that guy's in a Ferrari and therefore he probably didn't work for his money. What a douchebag. Or they just call him a douchebag off the bat. Now, again, that's oftentimes not the case. Sometimes they worked really, really hard for many years, maybe 20 years slaving away while everyone else uh, he knew partied to get that Ferrari. But because of your assumptions, you know, you're preventing yourself because on some level you're saying, oh, I can never do that because I don't want to be a douchebag. So unfortunately, you know, there is a bit of truth to why this is common. I think it's because there is a small portion, I would say a minority, but maybe it's not a minority, but a small portion of douchebags who may not have worked that hard for their money or they're flaunting it or they're being incredibly horrible people. But at the same time, it's far from every wealthy individual and on top of that, you know, there's a lot of, you know, unhealthy, jealous people who are just like, they let their jealousy consume them. And if you're watching this video, hopefully you're not one of them. If you are, that's not the type of person I want on my channel. Uh, so yeah, get lost. I'm kidding, but seriously, you have to remove that thinking. One thing I learned after studying countless successful wealthy individuals was that people who have made a lot of money and generally speaking almost always when you make a lot of money I'm talking 10 million plus billions of dollars 
it's almost always in a business because only through a business is that sort of money scalable enough uh, where you can reach that many people. But anyhow, what I learned was that you end up generating the most value by doing that. You're actually providing a tremendous service to a lot of people and exchanging a lot of value for your money. You are helping the world in a lot of ways. Now, is this always the case? Not always, but for the most part, I've surprisingly found this to be true because it's actually much harder than I realized to get someone to take their own cold hard cash, their own money out of their pocket and hand it to you to pay for something. Like that's really tough to do. And it turns out, and you know, I learned this the hard way through uh, you know, testing it out myself and also through hearing uh, hundreds of entrepreneurial startup stories, the power is in the customer. The customer has the power because they're willing to pay for specific things and not for other things. So a lot of people who want to start a company and be like super rich or whatever, they end up realizing, oh my goodness, it doesn't matter what I want to sell. It doesn't matter what product I think will do well and will sell. It's what the customers, uh, that's who matters, the customer. And they realize this the hard way, basically. Some of them create their own product. They spend hundreds of thousands of dollars making it. Then they ship it out or they try and sell it only to realize that no one's wanting to buy what you so believed everyone wants to buy. So a lot of people blindly follow this, you know, pursuit that their product is the most amazing thing ever. And that's oftentimes not the case. And most successful entrepreneurs I found from the founder of Groupon to numerous, numerous other businesses, uh, Dropbox, everything else really, it's very clear that their products and services were shaped by the customer. They had to pivot quite a lot from what they initially thought the market wanted because they had to serve the customer and what they wanted. Why? Because the customers are at the end of the day are the ones who are willing to pay money. And more often than not, the customers are only willing to pay money for stuff that they really want or really need. So by doing this, at the end of the day, a lot of wealthy individuals are really providing a tremendous service and value to a lot of people. Now, is this always the case? No, there's all sorts of screwed up stuff like monopolies or corrupt systems where, you know, customers are forced to pay a certain amount or whatever else. But having said that, I would say a good majority of businesses are about providing tremendous value and in that way I realized that a lot of wealthy individuals were compensated for what they did you know from any business you can think of these customers were like take my money if there's something like this out there I want it made so I can pay for it things like oh my goodness if there's only a more convenient way for me to buy affordable food or buy a present for Christmas or go shopping or whatever it is, have someone come in and install the internet or have faster internet. These are all things that were things, sometimes burning pains or issues that people were willing to pay for. So having learned that, I realized that Wow, business and wealth is a lot different than I thought. You know, before all this, which again, you may be at right now, you may have thought like I did, uh, I don't know, wealthy people are just, they just got wealthy somehow. And that's that. But now I realize that businesses, they oftentimes provide a lot of value. There are certain levels of value that are not rewarded in terms of wealth and money. For instance, nonprofits and charities and volunteering, you know, that's done out of the kindness of your heart. And it's not necessarily rewarded in money because oftentimes these people can't pay in money. 
but I would say you know they do just as great a service and provide just as much if not more value. Bill Gates, he's pouring in 99% of his wealth into places where you're not going to make a lot of money back. Uh, and that's one of the issues. Like some places you do a lot of good and you provide a lot of value, but you're not really compensated in terms of wealth. Same thing applies for a lot of high school teachers and middle school teachers who truly inspire their children and motivate their children to do greater things. So that's all I gotta say. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.